everybody, it's Jeff. This will be part two of the Whippet tank, uh, the Mark I by Meng, 135th scale. Um, I'm trying a few things new on this video. I'll tell you all about it once we get into it a little bit. But um, hope you guys are all doing real well. And uh, let's go down to the bench and uh, we'll see where we're at. Okay. Be right back. This will be part one. Um, I've put the instructions in the corner here. I'm doing it a little different this time. Um, last time I did the instructions, I got a real good response. Thanks guys for commenting. This time um, the instructions are being, how, I don't know how to say it for sure. They're on the screen while I'm recording. Okay, they're live. Uh, I can go over here and you can see the mouse. Okay, so I can point things out. And they'll stay in the same place and I can work around it. Before I was building and I couldn't really tell you where the instructions were going to end up. So I ended up working like this a lot. But uh, I can move this around on screen wherever I want. So I'm going to try and keep it in the corner there, and I'll try and keep away from, um, you know, away from the instructions so, so I'm not covering things up. But um, let's go ahead and get started here. A couple of things I wanted to talk about. Okay, the, this is, in the instructions, this is called the upper hall. Okay, there's a real big, uh, sprue connection point right there on the inside that I've already sanded off. you got to make sure that's gone because that will probably interfere with the bit of the other pieces. There was also two smaller ones here and here. Okay, so make sure those are all sanded off. These I'm not sure if they'll interfere with not or not, but I'm pretty sure that that one there will. I didn't see any other ejector pin marks or uh, not ejector pin marks, but sprue connection points. So this was pretty good. All these parts have been washed. I'm going to forgo the gloves right now. Um, before I do any painting at all, any priming, I'll wash it all again with alcohol. See how that works out. Okay. I did notice there's some ejector pin marks here on the inside, and I could kind of just vaguely see a witness of those on the other side. So I'm, I'm going to have to take a look at that. I might ever so slightly sand some of this just to make sure that those ejector pin marks don't come through my paint. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Let's uh, orient this part the same as the instructions. Okay, and I've got I've got several steps. I've got parts all prepared for. This is A13, A2, and uh, B14 and B2. These are opposites of each other. I didn't mark them, but it's pretty easy to tell which is which. So let's go ahead and start. This this is all on the back of the tank. Okay. Oop, got a lid on a little tight there. Okay. I marked the parts on the inside. It's not hard to tell them apart, but just you know, just to make sure I'm grabbing the right parts. On the bigger pieces, you can mark them in, a, in an inconspicuous spot. That fits real good. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of the glasses here. I see really good up close without glasses. I can't see at a distance at all without glasses. Let's go ahead and get this glued on. a tiny bit in the corners 
put our wick in. Okay. Let's do a little bit on the inside there too. on there good oh uh, by the way um, I've been seeing some stuff on the internet about uh, extra thin versus airbrush cleaner okay this that I'm using is airbrush cleaner Okay, as far as I can tell, they're the same thing. I did the math at the place I normally order from. This is six dollars. Okay, this is ten fifty. This is forty milliliters. That's two hundred and fifty milliliters. From everything I can tell, they're this, the exact same thing. So that brings, if, if you can use this instead of this, this takes the price of this at, from $6 to $1.68. Okay, so it's considerably cheaper. So I'm going to try this kit with nothing but the airbrush cleaner. And we'll see how it goes. But uh, that's, you know, the, the cost of the airbrush cleaner is like a third of the extra thin. So let's see how it goes. The next part was going to be A13. There's, there's a key here on the back, and it's got a key on there, too. It'll set just about like so. Okay, I'm going to put a little glue in that before I set the part on. I'm going to set a little airbrush cleaner, I should say, in there. I'm real happy with the plastic on this kit. It sands well. Seems to seems to do really well. Yeah, that stuck just fine. Now I'm going to run just a tiny little bit down this back side. If I'm like most of you guys, you probably got a or probably have had an empty bottle of extra thin or two laying around. So I just use the pipette. And uh, put some in there, and I marked it so I know what I'm, what's what. Okay, that's on there fine. Next, this will be B2, and it's got some pins on the back. Okay, let's put just a little cement right there. right there now for the sake of alignment I'm going to run a straight edge across those just to make sure everything looks good Okay, I am happy with that. The airbrush cleaner seems to work very well. Okay, this part here, uh, step A, 
or I should say step one is finished. So we're going to set that aside for a little while and move on to step two. See with this new, the way I've got this set up now, I can just scroll on over to step two. And if I want to zoom in on any particular step, it's pretty easy to do. So let's go ahead and work on two here. Now, A9, let's see here, needs to be folded. There's two creases here that are the fold lines, okay? And they line up with the, the uh, armor plate on the outside. Let's see how easy it is to fold. It is pretty stiff. What I'm going to do off camera real quick is I'm going to take a hair dryer and I'm going to warm this up. Okay? Uh, just to make it easier. Cause that is pretty darn stiff and the last thing I want to do is crack the plastic. So Let me get a hair dryer on this and I'll come back when I think it's warm enough and then we'll go ahead and bend it that way. Alright, be right back. There we go. Just a little bit of heat makes a big difference. You can see the stress put into the plastic even with heating it. These all need to glue at some point. But uh, until I get some other parts fitted and I'm happy with the the angles of everything, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to, to glue those joints. It was getting hot. I had to put a put a glove on. Yeah, it'd be real easy to break this piece if you just if it was cold. You know, like say you were in your garage or something and it was a little chilly, and you started bending it, it would probably pretty easily snap on you. What I want to do is just test it here quickly because this is where it's supposed to sit. It does look to me like this needs to go just a tiny bit more. Okay, that looks pretty darn good if you can see it. See these joints are, this is not tight. There is a little gap there. So you don't want to just bend it all the way and glue it and then it be in the wrong place. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, let's go ahead and continue with step two. We've got a few parts here. See, this will be K3, which is part of the ball mount. Now, the, the uh, pictures do not show this little tail on here, so I don't know if it matters if it goes up or down. There's two, uh, two little uh, recesses on the back side that fit over pins, so I'm guess it really doesn't matter just which way oh this had a lot of what they call Z pins on the inside also I think they're basically used for manufacturing purposes to keep the parts from completely falling out of the mold um, and I just trimmed those off just because I didn't want to interfere with anything let's see here That's where that goes. Mm 
Okay. And then on the other side we have this, which I'm assuming is a vent. And it goes, now that, make sure I'm doing it right, okay. So I'm upside down. There's uh, two little recesses here that'll lock this in, just like so. Okay, so let's go from the bottom, just a touch. from the top. Okay, that looks good. Um, one thing that I suppose I should mention, there are sprue connection points here on this angled surface here on this angled surface and then across the bottom. You got to make sure um, when cleaning up the, the uh, connecting points that you sand at the same angle as the rest of the part because a lot of these parts on this are at an angle. So you want to make sure to keep your angles all straight. If you sand too much or sand the angle wrong, then you're going to end up with a big gap. So let's try and... I tried real hard to make sure I kept all my angles correct. Okay, let's see here. We'll move on up. Let's see here. Okay, we've got another K3 to go on the back of uh, A3. Okay. Get the little pins to line up. Just like so. Okay, and this is A16. We've got to connect these parts together. Just like so. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue in here. Blue. Okay, I'm going to give that a minute to firm up and then we'll connect these two. Whoop, let's see, make sure I'm in the right place. That is interesting. The keys are different for what fits what, so you can't really get them upside down or backwards. I hope. Okay. That's firming up fairly quick. Go ahead and put some glue here. Yep, 
We have to touch more. Okay. Okay, tricky, but looks pretty good. Let's see what we got going on here now. So coming from right here. sure if that's supposed to set inside or over. And this is actually where it goes. Okay. And I'm assuming that glues to here. Looks good to me. We'll give that a little bit of time. And we'll move on to step three. First thing we'll do is A11. Then we've got A6. Try and keep this. This is um, B5, B12, and K3. Those are the parts for the next step. Okay, we need to put another one of these on the back. Okay, they've got arrows to show what to do next, so this will need to be attached to this, okay, and then we've got the roof to put on. Let's go ahead and put this on first, B5. Or excuse me, B12. It'll go in here. Okay. It's like so. Okay. And 
and let's see, this will need to go here. Like so. Okay. This does evaporate rather quickly. It's almost like the quick setting. Okay, I'm going to let that firm up just a little bit, and then we'll drop the roof on it. You know, let's give it a couple minutes. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, I think things have firmed up enough. I can continue on with step three. So what we need to do is we need to add the roof looks like it fits really well um, I'm not going to put just glue on the whole thing what I'm going to do is work one little section at a time so I'm going to make sure the back side here and this first angle fit good and get that glued and then just work my way around to make sure everything sits good okay Put a little glue here. Hold it for a second. Okay, let's go ahead and catch this, mm, probably glue that from the inside. Just make sure you keep your fingers away from the joint so that the glue doesn't capillary underneath your fingers. pressure there you just take your time work around your alignment just exactly where it needs to be before you move on. Okay. I'll get this next section here. Let's see. Figure out the best angle. There is a little tab there. Okay. And then one more time here. Make sure you keep your fingers away from the other side of the joint.
Okay. Don't see any gaps at all. Everything seems to line up just about right. Okay. And we got one more part for step three. That'll be B5, and it goes over here, just like so. Okay, so I'm probably going to glue the long edge here, and then get the two shorter edges. Sorry about my fingers being in the way. Just a second. I'm thinking that's supposed to go more to the inside. I'm not sure. That should go over. See how it sits on the main part here now. Not too bad. We're not ready to put it on yet. There's a slight gap right here, or I should say a slight overlap right there, which I think is easy to correct, and get it in the right spot. There's a slight gap right here, which pushing that back in to line up takes care of that. So that all fits real good. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Okay. Let's go ahead and get step four. Okay. Got the pieces here. I'll set those aside. Here we have to make a decision. Um, there's basically two versions, the A and B, that the instructions call out for. A is Firefly. B is Caesar too. Okay, in the instructions here, um, if you're going to do Firefly, you need to add this it's like a guard over the vision port. I'm going to do Caesar 2, so I don't want to add that. That would be the A version. Okay, so that part is going to be left off. It'll be extra. So this is B8. And it's going to be added to A12. Just like so. Lots and lots of little angles. But they are laid out real well. I am I am really impressed. There's been other models like this that I've built before where it seemed like no matter what you do, you always have one one joint that just doesn't want to close up. Okay. 
Okay. And then we have another uh, K3 that'll go on the back side of B4. These had more Z pins on the back of them, so I cut those off. Let's see here. Just like so. Okay, and this will go here. I don't remember now how many I'm supposed to count to. Okay, that looks really good. And then that's going to go on here. Boy, there's a lot of angles. Okay. That'll go just like so. Okay. So let's do this first. And then this one. That one doesn't really glue. There's no real place where those two touch. They just come right together. I guess I could put just a tiny bit of glue there. They touch, but they don't really overlap. Okay. That's got that. And let's scoot up here. On oh, this here, if you're going to attach that shutter, uh, you have to drill the holes for it, which we're not going to do. So I don't need to worry about those holes. So here's, here's the part we just built, and we'll add to what we did in the last step. Let's see how this all fits together now. Let's see here. Okay, I guess it goes like so. And we're going to have one more piece to add. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Let's do this. Okay, we've got a long joint and then these little joints here. Okay, and then up 
here. Pull that together. Got one little joint there. Put a little pressure on. Let's see here. I can figure out which joint we're looking at. Just hold it for a sec. Yeah, one tiny little gap right in the corner that I can't get rid of, but I might be able to put just a tiny bit of filler in from the back side. It's pretty good. Okay. Let's see how we're doing here. Wow, that fits really nice. Really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how we're doing on time here, but I think I'm going to go ahead and call that. And uh, let this stuff kind of firm up a little bit. And, oops. And then uh, we'll continue next time on step five. Okay, thanks for joining me, guys. Okay, talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.